economic development strategy. From education to agriculture and infrastructure, engineer Abdullahi Sule is exceeding expectations with his clear cut Nasarawa agenda. Find out more on Nasarawa Focus, Mondays, 8.30 p.m. One hour, 86 migrants enter Lagos State. It is a beehive of activities. Every second counts in the city that never goes to sleep. There is always something to talk about. We go the extra mile to tell the story of Africa's fifth largest economy. We track happenings on land, on waterways, and in the air. We go against all odds to ensure yeah, that you are heard. 85% of the entire side of Lagos is covered with water. I'm a dear just I'm a dear. I live in Lagos. <laughs> Around 8 o'clock like this, I begin to shoot everybody. For the first day this year now, we bet the police are going to come. They don't help us. But the way they fall everything. We have reported the matter to the police. in Cordo Alde's body. The man was saying in the court that he didn't mean to shoot the gun. The worst thing that you can do is to argue with an angry, angry person. Because remember that that angry person is holding a gun. The idea of quality assurance of the entire police force and the minimum entry level is O level, then that quality is really sharp. Nigeria is not the worst country in terms of the extenuating situation. Why do we seem to prefer fraud? Fraud is money. It's big money. And then there's something about criminals. Criminals would always seek opportunity. How do you begin to describe why, where a girl child is hated so much? It's not even money wipes. They are slaves. You know, when we say money wipes, we are, we are painting a beautiful picture. Is there a particular narrative recommendation to government? The government remains the major patron. They have the power to get things done. Hello, everybody. My name is Fumi Inyonda, and this is Public Eye. on Business Week. Words, facts, opinion. Is the orchestra of these men who do not sway to the synthetic rhythm of opinion. The debater screams words trapped in temples that run too fast to play back just as the instruments fall in and out of tune. Climbing a crescendo, men take a stand, testing and pulling, slamming the fact of each other, in and out. After the crescendo comes the climax, all notes quietly resting as the debates reach inference. Join me, Mark Otabo, as I conduct the symphony of debates on The Big Issue. There is always more to a story than the scrimmage line. The part of a story that is not told casts a shadow. It's like the part of an object that is not reached by light. On TVC News, I'm able to explore the many angles there are to a story, talking to stakeholders, asking the difficult questions, and digging for facts. I believe the viewers are able to make a better decision if they're well informed and understand not just a part, but the complete story. TVC News. First, with breaking news.
At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. Okay, welcome back. My guest this time is uh, Mokhtar Mohammed, our friend, stockbroker and financial analyst. Thanks a million for coming on. In the, um, the Lagos State budget of rekindled hope, 1.55 trillion uh, naira. You know, a princely sum. Um, what is your general impression uh, about this budget that is going to be replacing following its adoption of um, what we have now, which is the budget of awakening. I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm very impressed, um, especially I listen to the commissioner. And I hope, well, Lagos has been wanted to have a budget up to like 60 years. Yes, he's even so, saying they look good. good. So I, I think with that, I'll say I'm impressed with what I'm going to see. If we're going to have 90% of that budget implemented, then uh, I, I think it's going to be good for Lagos economy, especially from where Lagos is going to be coming from. Mm -hmm. Lagos is, was, 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 was hard hit during the NSAS protests. Yeah. And, and so it's, it, it's, it shows that governance um, uh, with creativity, innovations, to be able to come up with idea even at a short time like this. I, because I'm sure they had to go and reject that budget after the <laughs> incident that happened because of some of the you. provision they, yeah. they actually made, especially if you're talking about making provision for these businesses that were affected by the NSAS protest. I mean, that shows that they listen to the people. Indeed, but they, they, they have this um, theme uh, roadmap and um, uh, the commissioner who has just left was saying that um, they actually cast another eye at the roadmap or theme and they saw that it was it was very much still on course, it was robust enough to be able to accommodate all of this. Um, that was when I had alluded to him that um, you have to, how much of an impact did um, COVID, um, I mean, uh, uh, NSARS have on, on the budget, you know, he was saying almost like, I can't say it didn't impact it, but that the roadmap was so robust that um, horrible as the experience was, it didn't really shake them out of their moorings. Yeah, it might not shake them out of their moorings, but you, you, you need to look at a lot of um, infrastructures that were destroyed. And that will have to be addressed. must be addressed. Yes. You're talking about um, state-of-the-art traffic lights. Mm -hmm. Almost once you see any cage and exits or were destroyed, you're talking about the eco uh, the, uh, bridge was almost burned down. So those are exactly. very, very uh, strong infrastructure that they need to go begin to work on, on, on that. But for me, I think they, they, they might want to say that the impact was uh, not, uh, they might say that the impact was not much comparable to the, the way they prepared. Yes, no matter what, it you still have some. They, they, what, they, 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 so there's something I believe that they were planning to do now that they might not be able to do again. Will, they will have to look at this one and then shift that apart. So anyhow, it in fact happen. they've taken care of so very much. Uh, I, we, we didn't have all the time we need. We need at least two hours to just barely scratch the surface uh, of it because health is another very important one. Mm. And um, you know, Lagos being the epicenter so. of, of COVID-19 <laughs> in, uh, in Nigeria. Uh, the governor and his team, they've been very, very active in that regard. And so this would have reflected also uh, in... Yeah, for the health, I think uh, every even look at the federal government also made provision for health. This time we're seeing the kind of provision we have. Um, it would it would have been a, a failure of any government not to look at the health challenges, especially COVID-19, open our eyes to a lot of things. At that time, all of us, both the rich and the poor, were on the same level. Uh, nobody could travel out for medical treatment. It dawned on us then that look, we need to put our house in order. So it will be it will be a government that is not uh, um, sensitive to just wave it aside and say, look, we should continue doing business the way we used to do in the health sector. So I expect a state like Lagos State to begin to think of having maybe four st st state of the art hospitals mm -hmm. where that can cater for a lot of uh, of issues that have to do with health. And uh, they have health insurance now, so they need to push it up and make sure that a lot of Lagosians are captured in the health insurance um, bracket also indeed and you know it's been a long time plan of um, uh, Lagos um, uh, when I say long time plan I really should say better uh, long-term vision uh, this metro city Lagos is you know it goes either Fashola or before Fashola but, but I think Fashola no, really what you must give to the Lagos the, State government the, the metro metro city vision yeah and that includes what the commissioner shared that um, it's becoming more and more unacceptable to government in Lagos uh, to be an, 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 an anonymous person. So that's going to, you know, this is one of the key aspects of security that other clients um, use. 
we can find out about you, but it's too easy to be anonymous in Lagos, perhaps, and that it was going to be addressed. That's technology, and that costs money. Technology is the way to go. Um, I think one thing you must give to the, the various Lagos State government and maybe to the party APC, we've seen continuation. We've not seen, um, that's what we keep saying, that uh, government is a continuation of governance. We saw Ashwa Jibola Tinubu started, Tinubu, uh, when he left, Fashola almost start from, worked on what, that's why you don't get so much abandoned project in Lagos. Yeah, there's, you, this, there's this continuation. The continuity in the budget. You looked at when um, Akimu Miham Bode was going, people were, were, were worried about those uh, gigantic uh, um, 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 bus station and all that. And you go and you see that those bus stations are even being used, they were completed. So I, I, I think that's one thing you must give to Lagos State, the ability to continue. You know, Ambody started in the smart city. And I think Shuolu has not made noise about it, but it, you, you seem to see that he's working towards making Lagos indeed a smart city in its own technological way, what Lagos can uh, 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 be able to afford now going forward and then think of building on that. One area they still have a challenge uh, with in Lagos, perhaps in all states of the country, is um, the commissioner complaining about um, internally generated revenue. And they, he said it might look like a princely sum, but when you bring it down to per capita, it's not such great. In other words, ability to create. Why, why do we still have this? Problem? I think the challenge with that is that it has to do with because the informal sector have not been captured. And government, both the state and the federal government, have not been able to work out a strategy on how to capture the informal sector. The informal sector is the, is the woman that is selling rice in the street. How do you get that woman to pay tax? The, 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 the forkanizer that is, how do you get him to pay tax? The, the, even even the, 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 the commercial drivers, how do you get them to pay tax? So those are the, those are the strategies that every government has not been able to come up with. So they need to work on it. If, we do, if Nigeria capture the informal sector, as it is now, it will be able to generate Nigeria up to like 70, 70 to 80% of their own uh, wealth, I mean, of, of, of uh, revenue. The informal sector is one of the largest sectors in, in, in Nigeria. So I think the challenge Lagos State is having is the same challenge the federal government is having, how to capture the informal sector. So when you are saying the informal sector, you can easily capture them, have money passed through the bank, have pay salary, deduct from sources. But the informal sectors are sectors that you need to capture them. And sometimes if you capture those sectors, you, they need to see results. Mm -hmm. They need to see that, oh, Taxpayers' money is working on road on the street. They have good road, and then you come and say, "Look, you are staying here. We've been able to provide road for you. You should be able to pay tax for us, so that this road can continue to be better." They will pay. They are not difficult, but when you want to capture an informal sector that is a sector that provides power for itself, that provides road for itself, then it becomes a challenge. Indeed. Uh, good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you for calling in. Good morning to your guest. Indeed. Uncle Yori, I was just trying to find out. The Lagos State uh, Government Budget. Since they are talking about uh, those who suffer from the calamities of NSAS, is TVC also included? <laughs> because they, I am still unable to fathom why that kind of uh, thing was done to somebody. Mm. Mm. I, I, I honestly, I can't, I can't just understand it. it, it, it it's as if it is uh, calculated. Okay, already the truth of the matter is that thing is a 2023 uh, strategy for some people. Uh, Elijah Tiku Abubakar has more properties in Lagos than Tinubu. Why wasn't any of his properties touched? I'm sorry to sound like this, but I'm, I'm, still, if, I'm still unable to understand what was done to TVC and uh, your group. Okay. Why was it just isolated? Well, th thank you very much. You know, you know, for you know saying your piece. But uh, as you know, Mr. George, we were looking at the Lagos State budget. Uh, did you want to comment on that? Okay, Mr. George has gone. Um, but thank you very much. Um, you know, for the concern he showed, yeah. and it was it was part of what the commissioner had said that businesses that had been injured, you know, government. You know, was looking towards seeing how it could. Yeah, uh, be I, I was impressed because uh, when he said that, also remember that they already set up a committee led by the deputy governor. Mm -hmm. He have gone around and he, he, they said businesses that were affected, even if they have the data, they want those businesses to come up and fill some form exactly, and then get then they mm -hmm. will begin to see how mm -hmm. they. And the government, the governor even mm -hmm. said it, that most of those businesses are going to enjoy tax bracket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. So it shows that so they are already they are already um, um, thinking how to help those business come back on stream. Yeah. Which for me is is one of the best thing they will do because um, most business were really affected and the, and the, the bad part of it was that the SMEs even the the guy that exactly. is uh, the the hairdresser that has a hairdressing exactly. um, equipment was destroyed. The Babas Babin Saloon also were, was destroyed because it was located close to a shopping mall. They even in, in, in the Adenero Gusoya but the Thomas exit you could see people petty traders that has shops were also burned down. And, and I think it's good that the government is saying, how, can we, help? About that. how yeah. can we help these exactly. people to come back? And I think that is what we always say, direct intervention. In because like Mr. George mentioned, yep, the um, uh, TVC experience with, you know, the whole uh, uh, NSAS, uh, I, I think, I, I, it wasn't just TVC, no, as you know, quite a number no, of other businesses, large and small, no, as you've just pointed so, yeah. out. Uh, but it's good that the government is saying that, look, they haven't exactly said what exactly they, they will be do. doing. But the important thing here is that they do want data and they do want to identify with those data. people. I think they've said one thing they will be doing is tax bracket. Yes, yes. Other yes. things, maybe when they, we, they talk to them, they will, will come up with other things. Okay. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mohammed in Abuja. I, I hadn't even finished mentioning your name, Mohammed. And then they went and took this. <laughs> See if you can call back in again, Mr. Mohammed. So uh, calling I, from Abuja. I, I think um, in, in the area of TVC, being, um, we'll, well, I, I think the, the government has been smart about it. Like, if you begin to talk about TVC now, when other the people will come up and say, well, you're not talking about other businesses. You're talking only about TVC because you have political interests. I think, for me, I think the government have acted well, trying to see how they can revive small businesses. They're going to take it gradually, step by step, then they will get to how they will help um, other, other people, bigger stations. One thing I know you're probably you know, going to be very interested in is, is the employment situation, you know, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, quite frankly, dangerous level of unemployment among the youths. They, they have plans for that, as you've heard. Um, the governor is speaking about so many um, infrastructural projects that would also be interlinked with this whole idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm just right there because Lagos State already had the what, what we call the is it the youth, the youth. Uh, uh, one, one, one moment, please. Let me take uh, Mr. Abdullahi calling in from Zaria. Good morning. Thank you very much. Good morning, young Kuyori. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, young Kuyori. I would like to contribute to your discussion on the issue of uh, capturing the informal sector. Well, we were looking at the Lagos State. The Lagos State 1.55 trillion naira budget. Yes. Maybe you, yes. maybe you also saw the commissioner for budget uh, when he was on earlier. Yes, I, 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 I the, the budget presentation and uh, all the sectors that are, uh, they are trying to Impact. affect in their budget. Sure. And uh, your guest was talking about how to capture the informal sector oh, okay. into the task list. Yeah, so because the commissioner had a complaint. Task that they couldn't capture enough. Yes. Yes, yes. so that their tax generation will be uh, expanded. Uh, for, for the informal sector to comply in paying their taxes, they must see social infrastructure on ground. I commend the states on their social infrastructural development. Uh, you, uh, I could remember there was a time that people are uh, willing to pay their tax in labor states just simply because they see where their money is being spent on, what their money is being spent on. Unlike the federal government, the federal government can never capture the informal sector based on what is on ground now because virtually there is nothing the common people are enjoying. The only thing we are enjoying is security. Even the security now is no longer there. When you come down to the north now, people sleep with their eyes open. Because it has reached a level that the kidnappers are coming into the people's house to come and kidnap them. So how do you tell such a person to come and pay tax? Tax for what? When you go to hospital, there is no medicine. You go to school, there are no dilapidated structure. Your road, the road networks are so bad. The light is not there. The water is not, type on water is not there. What do I pay the tax for? So you let them go and generate their money from where they are generating and continue TV this the way they are doing all so right, yeah. I don't think the common people will pay any tax now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I think the bottom line of all of that is that um, Lagos should have a better case. 
Yeah, but Lagos should have a better but, uh, with, it's, with, it's, it's, with, with, with the people in terms it, of being able to capture them. Yeah, but Lagos should have a better case. Like you said, um, some streets in Lagos have street lights. Uh, the Lagos state have come around with neighborhood security yeah. also. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things that the people could feel. But I, I want to slightly disagree with him that uh, tax is, is, a, is our social responsibility to pay tax. Yes. It's not, uh, it's, it, 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 though, because of the type of corruption that we hear in this country, that's why people tend to look at, oh, I must have roads because I, if I I pay my tax. It's not. It's not done like that. It's even an offense when they are caught that you are not paying tax. It, it's not in the. It's it, it, it's a, it's, a, yes, it's, it's, it's a responsibility for it, you to pay indeed. tax. But but he did make the point in relation to the social uh, what's the, yeah, infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure. Yes. That I, I, that's what I'm saying. That even with or without the <laughs> even, social, with, without, without, even without without you have to, you're supposed to once you can generate revenue somehow he's talking about security. He's talking about, but again, even if the, even if the road is not tight, somebody make sure that the road can be more terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, and I want to thank you, Mukta Mohammed, to, you know, for coming in and, um, as it were, giving an overview of the budget and um, areas of it that um, sort of uh, impressed you. Thank you very much, as always. Always a pleasure, Uncle. Appreciate Yari. you, yeah. and uh, thank you also outside out there, you know, for calling in with um, your comments and questions. Um, that's our program today. Um, as you hear in the news, COVID-19 has not gone away. So please keep up all the protocols as are being advised, social distancing, wear a mask and all of that. Um, see you tomorrow, God willing. I'm Yori Falarin. Bye-bye for now. The following is a paid presentation by ShopX TV. Are your kitchen drawers starting to look like a bad garage sale? Steamers, rice cookers, roasters, slow cookers, and just how many pots and pans does one kitchen really need? And every time you cook, cleanup's a disaster. Scraping, scrubbing, what a chore. What if you could replace all this with one single nonstick pan? And what if this pan was innovative in design and made of the highest quality craftsmanship? And what if you could cook with it on the stove and in the oven? Introducing Copper Chef, the nonstick all-round square pan. It's a breakthrough in technology. Copper Chef with extra deep sides replaces a roasting pan, a rice cooker, a steamer, a stock pot, a wok, and a baking dish. What's the secret? Copper Chef's innovative stainless steel induction plate heats the pan quickly and evenly with no hot spots. And watch this. Copper Chef is heat proof up to 850 degrees. Incredible. Plus, your Copper Chef pan features Ceramitec, a new generation of healthy ceramic nonstick technology. That means nothing will stick to your pan. And because you're cooking with ceramic non-stick, you don't have to add all that extra fat and butter. Copper Chef is unbelievable. You don't have to use as much oil or butter, and it cooks in half the time. Copper Chef's stainless steel induction plate makes it perfect for any surface, electric, gas, ceramic, and induction. Amazing! With over a million units sold worldwide, the Copper Chef has taken the cooking industry by storm and is now available in Nigeria exclusively from ShopX TV. You could be paying over 100,000 Naira for a pan that's not even even non-stick. But call the number on the screen now and get the Copper Chef single pan for just 34,750 Naira. Your Copper Chef pan also comes with a deep fry basket, a tempered glass lid, a steam rack, and a recipe book at no extra charge. But that's not all. ShopX TV is proud to introduce the Copper Chef XL pan to add to your collection. The family-sized XL pan is 60% larger than the standard pan and works on all stoves including electric, gas, ceramic, induction, and even in the oven. Call the number on the screen now and also order the amazing 360 non-stick frying pan with induction plate to add to your Copper Chef collection. This amazing Copper Chef triple combo set has a combined retail value of over 167,000 Naira. But if you call now, you can get the entire three-piece collection for not 167,000 Naira, not even 120,000 Naira, but just 81,900 Naira. That's a savings of over 80,000 Naira. This incredible ShopX TV offer includes two deep fry baskets, two tempered glass lids, two steam racks, and a recipe book, all for just 81,900 Naira. But hurry, this exclusive TV offer is for a limited period only. So call now while stocks last. Let's get cooking. The proceeding was a paid presentation brought to you by ShopX TV. Do you want to win? Take your smartphone, place a bet on 1x bet. It's very simple. Just one click, and then watch your bet win and enjoy every victory. 1x bet. Virtual games, real wins.
The TVC News at 7 and the TVC News at 10 are not like any other news broadcast. It's the big news hour, the hour for the big brick and stone. So we've got some of the best reporters on the field. Taking you through as it happens. It's fast-paced, hot hit. With investigations that matter. Bringing in news that affects your life. With sport, entertainment and business news so you don't miss a thing. Experience resourceful coverage with that. Ever. Information is power. Information is security. Information is knowledge. On Labor Land, we believe that working people around the world have real questions of their own. They want to know how the world of work operates, what it means to the employer of labor, how policies affect workers in the workplace. On Labor Land, I ensure we engage effectively the organized labor, organized private sector, and government to get out of them information workers are in need of. I am sure. Sharon Jackson asking questions that make you get sense of the workplace. and begin to shoot everybody. For the fact that it's there now, we invent the office of the come. They don't help us. But the way they spoil everything. We have reported the matter to the police. Because remember that that angry person is holding a gun. The quality of quality assurance of the entire police force and the minimum entry level is O level, then that quality is really important. Nigeria is not the worst country in terms of the extenuating situation. Why do we seem to prefer fraud? Fraud is money, it's big money. And then there's something about criminals. Criminals would always seek opportunity. How do you begin to describe why, where a girl child is hated so much. It's not even money wipes, they are slaves. You know, when we say money wipes, we are, we are painting a beautiful picture. Is there a particular lap tip recommendation to government? The government remains the major patron. They have the power to get things done. Hello everybody, my name is Fumi Iyonda, and this is Public Eye. Business.